Welcome to Checking Our Pulse. My name is Marcus Hart. I am the director of the Organ Transplant Program at Swedish, and I'm joined by Devon Love, who is the program director at the Multicultural Health Center. And uh, today we're going to check our pulse about heart disease in the African American community. This is one of five segments that uh, Swedish Medical Center and the Northwest African American Museum uh, have pulled us together to focus on issues that disproportionately affect African -American, uh, the African American community. So now, Devon, help us understand and get our arms around the issue of heart disease in the African American community. Um, if you, you know, I was looking at some of the statistics and it, it, one, one says that about 40% of African American men and women will have some form of heart disease. Yes. Heart disease is rampant as well as other diseases in the African American community, but in particular, heart disease is uh, part of a classification of diseases known as cardiovascular disease. Yes. And in particular, heart disease disproportionately affects African Americans with high blood pressure. So a lot of us are running around with high blood pressure and that's what puts us at greater risk for developing other diseases of the heart. Yes, and it really, high blood pressure really is a silent killer. You can, you can be walking around with high blood pressure and not know. Exactly. And so uh, part of this issue is making sure that we access health care and get our blood pressure checked on a regular basis. Are we doing that or is that part of the problem? I think that is part of the problem. There's other things that lead to the problem. Part of it is our diet, but it's just not knowing what risk factors are, not being aware, and yes. then also not doing things to prevent and manage disease as yes. we know it. Yes, yeah, so now you, you strike upon the, the diet issue. Now, mm -hmm. what is it in our diet that is leading us to have more heart disease? So some of it is that um, we've prepared foods in a traditional way for numbers of years and because of that we have higher levels of sodium intake and that's one thing that really affects our heart as far as high blood pressure and then therefore developing other heart diseases. Yes, because sodium, wherever sodium goes, water goes mm -hmm. and that fills up our our cardiovascular system mm -hmm. and that makes the pressure higher. So if yeah. you eat salt, it's going to bring water and it's going to make our blood pressure higher. But So it's sodium, it, what about fat? Fat as well. Yes. Um, in taking a lot of cholesterol, our bodies really make all of the cholesterol that we need. We get extra cholesterol from the fatty meats that we eat and other things that we eat, trans fats. And yes, but now that's what makes it taste good, though. That know? is what makes it taste good. <laughs> you know, I remember my grandmother, you know, cooking the food in a little butter, and mm -hmm, she'd make the biscuits mm -hmm. and extra butter. Now, are there things that we can modify in our diet that could help us uh, as a group? There are things that we can modify, and for instance, um, one thing that we traditionally prepare is collard greens or turnip yes. greens, mustard greens, and yes. um, typically have done those with fat back, you know, or using lard in our cooking. So yes. cutting that out, maybe using smoked turkey instead of the bacon or the ham hock, and yes. things like that. And what, what's the substitute for the butter or the or the shortening that we use? Is there a good substitute for that? Um, well, in some cases, olive oil. <laughs> olive oil, yes. Okay, so diet is one aspect of, uh, that, that leads us to have more cardiovascular disease. What are some other things that um, we can raise awareness about? So being physically active. One thing that we don't do as a community is get out and get active as much. And it's not about joining a gym, yes. um, but just making sure that you're getting your body moving. Um, yes. Those are things that we can do. Now, how, what are we talking about? Are we, are we running marathons? or How much activity do I need to do each day to, to bring my, uh, to reduce my risk factors? So it's recommended that we get 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes per day, but it's not that we have to get all of those 30 minutes at one time. So you can okay. break it up into 10 minute increments, but it's really just about getting out there, and making sure that you're building up your cardiovascular system, getting it moving, making your heart pumping, yes. maybe a little sweat is involved at You've times. You've got to sweat a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just walk. Exactly. You have to get your heart rate up, sweat a little bit, mm -hmm. and okay, so then we're going to modify our diet. Uh -huh. um, we're going to eat less fat. Eat less fat, cut down on our sodium intake decrease our alcohol consumption, yes. going to increase our um, consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables. And smoking? Smoking, we're going to quit if we do and not start if we haven't. There we go. Well, I yeah. think those are good messages yeah. uh, for the community mm -hmm. and um, things that we can really affect yeah. uh, and reduce our cardiovascular risk. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And um, this, is, this segment will repeat over the course of the year and uh, will 
this is going to be uh, present at the Northwest African American Museum until June of 2011, and we hope you can join us.